watching ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Even in sunny San Diego, the holiday season is about meeting up with old friends. The former conference mates, San Diego State and BYU, led by old pals Rocky Long and Bronco Mendenhall, gather again in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Should old acquaintance be forgot? The pleasantries exchanged. Now it's time for the familiar foes to clash again. On a beautiful December night in San Diego, California, welcome to the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. San Diego State and BYU meet again. Happy holidays and welcome to San Diego. I'm Carter Blackburn, Jamel Hill on the sideline, and of course, Rod Gilmore. And Rod, every time we see BYU, we talk about the evolving quarterback situation. And here in the bowl game, got another change. Yeah, uh, James Lark is going to get the start. He is a fifth-year seniors guy. Hasn't played an awful lot. Got one start at the end of the year against New Mexico State and a chance to get them maybe back to their roots of pushing the ball down the field. He's a strong-armed guy, loves to throw the deep ball, but we're going to see Riley Nelson tonight as well, I believe. He's been banged up most of the season, has a rib injury, but we do expect to see both quarterbacks. But the key for BYU is on the other side of the ball. It is defense, and how about Ziggy Ansah? He is the talk of the NFL scouts right now. He's a 6'6", 280-pound speedster who can get after the quarterback. And just a couple of years ago, he didn't even know how to put on a football uniform. Grew up playing basketball and soccer in Ghana. I think he's got the hang of football now. One of the great stories in all of college football we'll be delving into tonight. But the question for Ezekiel Ansah against San Diego State is, can he and BYU <laughs> stop the run? Yeah, they'll, they'll be tested. This is old school football. This is pounded, get after you, real physical, tough style what? of a game. And they've got a guy in the backfield who does a nice job with it, Adam Muema. He is a 1,300-yard rusher. He was part of a two-back tandem this year, but Walter Casey is not playing tonight. He's out. He's hurt. So this young man's got to carry much more of the load in order for San Diego State to control the football game. The old familiar friends meeting as the sun goes down in San Diego. The Aztecs and the Cougars kick it off the Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. It's cold outside where you are, you just say, you're sorry. Lovely night here in San Diego, California for San Diego State and BYU. The more we check in on the sideline with Jamel Hill. Now, this is BYU quarterback James Lark's fifth year on the roster. And I asked him, does he feel a little bit bitter about just now getting an opportunity? And he said anybody that's been moved down the depth chart is going to play with a chip on his shoulder. But he said he's going to try to make the most of his opportunity tonight. Now, I also asked Coach Bronco Mendenhall if he regrets not going to Lark sooner and maybe staying too loyal to injured starter Riley Nelson. And he said, if my mistake was being too loyal, where there are worse things to be called back to you. Thank you, Jamel, and a happy birthday to Jamel Hill. Also, Bronco Mendenhall now sees the fourth starting quarterback of the past two years for BYU as James Lark gets his second start. Riley Nelson, Jake Heaps, Taysom Hill started this year as a freshman. He is injured, expected back for spring ball. Bronco Mendenhall, the former uh, defensive coordinator for Rocky Long in their time at New Mexico. Rocky Long, the New Mexico grad, the winningest coach in New Mexico history. Now in his second year at San Diego State, Brady taking Hill. over for Brady Hope. Rocky Long and Bronco Mendenhall meet again in the ball game in San Diego. Long history between the two. It's a little bit of the pupil with the mentor. They go back to their days at Oregon State and New Mexico where Rocky Long was the head coach. San Diego State has won seven straight games in this series. BYU has won five straight. BYU now independent, San Diego State, and the Mountain West Conference. 
Alan Lockett lets it go through the end zone, so touchback, and we will see from the 25-yard line the San Diego State offense quarterback by the sophomore Adam Dingwell, who took over in the Nevada game October 20th, led San Diego State to a dramatic come-from-behind win, playing in place of the injured Ryan Katz, and the sophomore has grown into this role in the Aztecs. I tell you, I I'm impressed with his composure. He came in in that Nevada game on the road, took care of the team, got them a win, and did the same thing on the road at Boise State. And here is the San Diego State offense that Rod called old school football. And it begins, of course, with Adam Perrimo, who averages 113 rushing yards. Yeah, but, you know, this, this offense, as the coaches will gladly tell you, is not built to throw the football. It's built to be physical and tough and to run it. You would have brought you on to us. I'd be happy to only throw it 10 times the rest of the game. So I, I wish that they would change the rules of football. I don't have any. I don't have any say in these things, all the conference realignment, the coaching changes, where Rocky Lawrence says, hey, if you made me clean, there'd be a limit on the number of times you can pass it. So here's number one up for Dingwell. Downfield complete. That's Ezo Ruffin. Aztecs hit their first big one in the basket. Yeah, well, Dingwell is a guy who throws very well on the move. He has a lot of athleticism. They don't like to run him a lot, but they move the launch point. They get him outside, they let him throw on the run. He's comfortable with that. But he's a guy that's played well under pressure, and, and maybe that comes back from high school in Texas where he played in front of lots of fans. Rockwall, Texas, the Yellow Jackets. That's on the banks of Lake Ray Hubbard. East of Dallas. All start coming against the Aztecs. He played in a few games with 30, 25,000 people. Ball start, 44 offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Back officiating crew tonight, led by Tony Pinello. When you watch this offense, and it's such a physical offense, you pay attention to the fullback, you pay attention to the guards, how they get on linebackers. I mean, that's really where the action is with this offense. And we will see them shift and shift again throughout the night. But in the end, it ends up with Moroma, and there's Rona Kavinga and Kyle Van Noy, the linebackers leading the charge for the highly ranked BYU defense. Well, when you say you want to play physical football, you know what BYU's defense says? Bring it. Bring it on. This is one of the top ten defenses in the country, in my opinion. And Van Noy, he's, got, he's a guy that has a real dilemma. Does he stick around for one more year, or does he go to the NFL? He is really highly regarded. We've talked about Ziggy Ansah a little bit. Both of those guys are star players. Moema on second down. Picking his way to get back the third and manageable, which is big because of those guys you just mentioned, Ansa and Van Noy, if BYU puts you in third long, they're pinning their ears back. Yeah, and you'd think right now in this situation, it's normally a passing situation, but given that they're at the 41-yard line and they're concerned about those two guys getting to the quarterback, they may run here. They may run it a couple times instead of putting Dingwell in a position where he's got to think about Ziggy coming off the edge. So keep your eyes on 47 and 3. Ansa and Van Noy. Aztecs block him up, but the short pass is intercepted by Ezekiel Ziggy Ansa. On the first third down of the night, BYU forces the takeaway. Well, they didn't bring a lot of pressure. Now, Ansa was almost kind of spying a little bit, and he is relentless in his effort, so he managed to get back and be in position to come up with the ball. Watch 47 to the left of your screen. Doesn't give up, sees the ball, now he's moving down the field. Right place, right time to guys who hustle a little bit, huh? And Sandifer was uh, unable to hang on to that ball, almost like he wasn't expecting it. So the BYU offense, quarterback by James Lark, the fifth year senior, St. George, Utah, getting just his second start and on the first offensive play. Ball start. 73 offense, five yard penalty, first down. You know, I, I'm really anxious to see Lark in person. I, there's only one game, one tape of him, and that's against New Mexico State, so it's a little bit hard to judge his performance against a defense like that that struggles so, so much, but he can push the ball down the field. I, I really want to see what he brings to the party tonight.
four wide receivers on first and 15. Lark completes, slipping after it's incomplete. Falslep couldn't hang on, hit the turf. So Falslep slips, pass is incomplete. Well, this offense, as you mentioned, has struggled most of the year. Quarterback being an issue because of injuries and the like. And as Brandon Dolman, the offensive coordinator, who really wants to get back to throwing the football and doing what, what he knows and understands, a wide open offense. We asked Brandon Dolman, is this something uh, game plan wise with four four wide receivers throwing the football more? Is this just for the bowl games? Is no, this is the direction we want to get back to heading into 2013. Lark rolling on second and 15. It's going to be third and long on the first possession for BYU. Cody Galea, the defensive end, gets the pressure. You know, I think the break between the last game and this bowl game gave BYU a chance to step back and look at things and say, you know what? We are so far removed from our identity. I mean, we're doing this read stuff. We're running quarterbacks. We've had two quarterbacks beat up. What are we doing? Let's get back to who we are. And that is one of the big reasons why uh, perhaps return to the throwing around offensive philosophies of BYU, the injuries, Riley Nelson and Taysom Hill. It's James Lark at quarterback now for third and 13. Pressure coming from the Aztecs. It's almost intercepted. Burhe got his hands on it. Near the pit. Second team all-conference safety. This ball is right there. I think he's surprised that it just jumped on him like that. I mean, hit him in a bad place. Right in both hands. <laughs> Spoken like a defensive back. Hey, if we could time. catch, they would make us wide receivers. So a three and out for BYU after the turnover. Stevenson, real miss punt for Stevenson. Goes out of bounds right around the 35. So the Aztecs get the football back. Scoreless so far in San Diego. San Diego County Credit Union poinsettia bowl from San Diego, California. BYU against San Diego State. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Today was a good day in San Diego. You can sell the lights of the Goodyear one. San Diego State's second offensive possession. First and ten for the Aztecs from the 38. Moema out of the eye, and he is dropped for a loss. Onsa is the first one to get there, and then Wona Kavinga finishes it off. It's a BYU defense that gives up only about 84 yards rushing a game. That front seven is big, it's physical, and they've got guys on the edge like Van Noy who can really get into the backfield. So if the question, Rod, is how do these guys who love to get after the passer, and why they're rated so high potentially for the draft, especially Onsa, can they hold up against the power run game from San Diego State? Well, they've done a decent job of it most of the season, so you would feel, assume that they can. Moema gets back to around the original line of scrimmage. Ansa in there on the stop again. Now, if you're San Diego State, you don't want to give up on the rushing attack just because you're being thwarted by BYU early on. I mean, unless you get way behind in the ball game, you want to stay with it, and you want to hope that that physical style wears them down, and you can get something going eventually. Last time San Diego State faced third down, Pick. Ezekiel Alonso got the interception. Prior to this third down, timeout BYU. Time out. BYU, their first charge timeout of the half. Third down coming with Ansa and Van Noy and in the years back. ESPN College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big bank banking, it's better. Ashford University, technology changes everything. And ProjectLuna.com. Did that kiss begin with K? <laughs> Just a kiss. Good to see world for not only BYU visiting from the Wasatch in Utah, but for the Aztecs who are playing in their home city at their home stadium in a bowl game for the second time in three years, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. But 
They got to do some of the fun bowl stuff in their own town. On third down, Adam Dingwell completes, and the Aztecs convert. At Sandifer, who hangs on this time and takes it across the 50. Well, Dingwell had plenty of time. BYU tends to play coverage on third down, and they don't bring a lot of pressure. They tend to drop more guys into coverage. They only rush three here. That's plenty of time, and Dingwell has the time, finds Sandifer, but that's a choice by BYU and a tendency they've had all season long that San Diego State anticipated. Play fake. Dingwell completes. Muwema out of the backfield, slipping away for a first down and still rolling. Muwema all the way to the 11. He made a few guys miss, including Ansa. He made a miss, and Ziggy Ansa comes back to make the tackle. But this is a great individual effort. Muema is not incredibly fast, but he's got great change of direction. He can make the guys and almost slip and come back with a good move. There's that big guy hustling to get back into the play to make the tackle. 22 yards after the catch for Adam Muema, the sophomore. Dingwell keeps it on first down right around the 10 to pick up of a couple. Spencer Hadley leads the BYU defense. And an over through there on the stop as well. Now the guy who's been really, really big for San Diego State, down inside of 20 in that red zone, Escobar, the tight end. The junior who was caught six touchdowns and is another the players in this game weighing a potential mm -hmm. NFL career after his junior season. That's Escobar at the bottom of the formation, number 88. Dingwell rolls the other way, drops it off to Chase Price. It is incomplete, so third and eight coming. Now Price is stepping in for Walter Casey. Casey injured now in Price. Little used at running back this season, has to step in and help out. Muima just can't carry the load by himself tonight. Walter Casey, the backup running back, re-injured his knee versus Wyoming. The fullback Young next to Dingwell on third and eight. Before the play. Timeout, San Diego State. First charge, timeout. Third and eight for San Diego State from the BYU 10. Pass play by Muwema sets San Diego State up third and eight from the 10. There's Escobar down to the bottom of the screen. He is a big target down here. Dingwell. Checks down, incomplete, and a big hit laid on the wide receiver, Colin Lockett. Craig Bills, the free safety, drops the junior wide receiver, Colin Lockett. Good clean hit. That's not one that was above the numbers. It wasn't targeted to the head. Didn't see the defender leave his feet. Watch to the inside. Here comes Lockett. That's right at the numbers. That's a good, clean hit. And that's where you're trying to get players, defenders, to move the target is to move it down. And that's why he didn't see any flags on that one. Didn't leave his feet, didn't go for the head. Look at the shoulder right into the chest. It's an example, Rod. We see it evaluate so many hits throughout the season. And if there is, if there is the targeting, at the neck area is what yeah. the rule now says. The neck area or above. They're going to flag yeah. it every time. But you can still make a very hard hit yes. on a receiver legally. You it's, can be physical. And yeah. you can make hits like that without targeting the head. And that's a good example of it. No flags. Everybody's happy. Lockett gets up and walks out. Got the wind knocked out of him. You don't worry about a concussion. Wind knocked out of him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's up and yeah. walking. I like it. Yeah. yeah. 
So lock it back to the sideline. That hit by Craig Bills helps ensure a field goal attempt coming. This is Chance Martin, who has made eight of his last nine. 27-yard attempt is good. So San Diego State on the board to start a 3-0 lead on BYU. But the Cougars keep the Aztecs out of the end zone. With Christmas just five days away, you know what that means as a sports fan. The NBA Christmas special presented by State Farm. This is like a huge box of NBA action. This is like when you were a kid, you see the big box under the tree, and you say, yeah, that's that's the one that I want to unwrap first. All from noon Eastern all the way through 1030 Eastern on ESPN and ABC. We're going to have Joe Tessitore and Palmer and Pollock breaking all this down for us. Forget football. They're going to give us basketball. Let's hear that at the half. Yeah, I want to hear, yeah, I want to hear how uh, the Lakers solved their myriad of issues from those guys. Nobody else seems to have any answers. Just keeping their fingers crossed for uh, Nash's return. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, and Jamel Hill from San Diego, California, Qualcomm Stadium. Rocky Long, the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. Second time he's won the award. Once as the head coach of the New Mexico Lobos, his alma mater, where he's the winningest coach. And now this year with uh, San Diego State in typical Rocky Long fashion. Didn't want to even talk about it. <laughs> uh, Rocky Long is hilarious. A good time chatting with both of these head coaches. Paul Sled takes a knee. Take a look at the BYU storylines for the season, the 2012 Cougars. An elite defense, third in total defense, among the nation's best in any of the categories, but a lot of close losses, offensive struggles, and then some explosions. Yeah, it, well, the problem for them has been turnovers on offense. Their offensive line was unstable most of the season, and the quarterback play at times is erratic. Guys were hurt and beat up and forcing the issue. Riley Nelson, in particular, forcing the ball at times, and those things cost them. They could easily have won another three or four games. Nelson threw 12 interceptions. BYU was minus five in the turnover category coming in. Quick hitter to J.D. Falsla, complete from James Lark, the senior quarterback. BYU gets his second start for the Cougars. Well, and, and the thing about this offense, you look at these wide receivers and you go, wow. I mean, they got guys 6'3", 6'4". They look the part. They're athletic, but they have trouble getting the ball to them. I mean, Hoffman is the guy who's considering jumping to the NFL instead of coming back next year. Hoffman did explode in that regular season finale against an overmatched New Mexico State team. That's Jamal Williams, freshman running back, making it third down. Hoffman was explosive in that game, but that was so yeah. rare this year for BYU. Yeah, yeah. And, and now with this defense, you know, the place to attack this defense is down the field because they play so much man coverage. And they use so many things. They bring so much pressure and so many stunts to try and take away your rushing attack. They leave their corners one-on-one -on -one a lot. That's really where you want to take your, take your shot. Five wide receivers on third and two. Lark, complete. False lev makes the grab across the 40, passing on third and two, just as we were talking about, a different look for the BYU offense. Well, they got a nice matchup with False Lev against Pinkins, who's a strong safety matchup against a quick change of direction guy. Only two senior starters for the San Diego State defense. Those are the corners, Wade and McFadden. Blair Tusshouse at center is starting for the injured Braden Hansen. Screen to the outside. Cody Hoffman. First touch for Hoffman goes for about three. King Holder, the corner brings it down. Yeah, but that's not going to get you much when you've got man coverage out there because that corner is watching that receiver, and as soon as that receiver takes a couple steps back, he's up on it. So they they, they got to get the ball down the field some. Complete on second down. Mark fires it in there to Richard Wilson. Does the seventh catch of the season. The junior Richard Wilson. Burhey on the stop. A third and short. BYU has used a lot of two tight ends during the season. A lot of two backs. You would expect them to use that here. And 
try and pound this defense. It, it's not a big defensive line for San Diego State. Four straight completions for James Lark. Wildcat. It's Williams. Stood off. San Diego State stops Williams on the Wildcat to force fourth down. John Sanchez, the defensive end, leads the way. Well, it doesn't do you a lot of good to have an extra blocker on offense when you're in the Wildcat if your blockers get beat. <laughs> and San Diego State just destroyed one-on-one -on -one blocking at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and one, Riley Stevenson will punt to Rene Silwana. Although at this point in the field, of course he would punt. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Good save. I was going thinking the whole time. Bob there. <laughs> Inside the five, a 44-yard punt for Stevenson. Seven. Getting ready for the Vivo Brady's Bowl St. Petersburg. Ball State and UCF. Ball State visiting the hospitals there in the St. Petersburg area. Now I understand, right? I, I understand. I have a, one of my beach sources in St. Petersburg tells me Ball State dominated the beach competitions no way UCF. i don't know no way i don't know what that means as far as the beach or brady's bowl well, you can't st petersburg you can't line. you can't be from florida and get beaten in exactly volleyball. from ball state from yeah and i mean it was uh you know all the the hula hooping the beach tug of war it's, it's, it's apparently, on now apparently the belly flop <laughs> competition was pretty fierce it is on now Aztecs got a field goal their last drive. This time they start at their own five. And Moema barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon Ogletree, a senior linebacker who's BYU's leading tackler this year. The guy that Rocky Long said when he was basically selling himself and recruiting in his family, he said basically his family hounded me yeah. into giving him a scholarship. Bronco said, I didn't think he could play. No, he, I didn't think he could play. He's their leading tackle. They wore senior. him down. They, they pestered him every possible way. They had friends. They had every contact they had pester until they got the scholarship. So your leading tackler is a guy that Bronco said he didn't think they could play for him. Your best defensive player, Ezekiel Ansa, didn't play football until two years ago. And he had a great BYU defense. Bowimbo runs right through it for a first down. Well, he's such a patient runner. He picks his way through. That allows him to have really good vision. He, he just worry about his ability to take the pounding and carry the ball 25 or 30 times when he doesn't get a chance to, to get a rest and share it much. There's an injured Aztec. That's Zach Dilly, the right tackle. Dilly, the sophomore right tackle, back up on his feet, a chance to look at the Aztec storylines. How about first road win over a ranked opponent in school history, winning on the blue turf at Boise State, seven-game winning streak. That share of the Mountain West Conference title is the first conference title for San Diego State since 1998. So Rocky Long in his second year as the Aztec head coach after taking over when Brady Hope went to Michigan. Yeah, came down here with uh, Brady Hope to be the defensive coordinator after leading New Mexico or was kind of forced out of New Mexico. Yeah. I mean, they were winning seven, eight games a year with Rocky Long, but they thought that wasn't good enough. I think they might miss him now. How about Southern Miss with Jeff Bauer, who had 14 straight winning seasons, bowl games every year, uh, and then uh, Ofer this year. I think those seven, eight win seasons seem pretty good right now. Yeah, absolutely. Jamel? Yeah, it was interesting because uh, Coach Rocky Long, he was very vocal about all the changes that he's seen in college football, particularly with these coaches hopping to schools. He said, you fire a coach after a year or two, and then five years later, he wins a championship, and then you discover he's not a good guy. So very vocal in his criticism of coaches hopping jobs. Both of these coaches really uh, were up front as Malema breaks that one across the 29. We'll discuss the... Uh, Thoughts between the coaches uh, a little bit more. You know, both of these coaches, and it, we've heard it from media members, we've heard it from others. We have not heard it as specifically as we heard from Rocky Long and Bronco Mendenhall saying uh, it is a moral failing by college football coaches to make promises and then 
turn their back on. Well, I, I think Rocky Long, he said as much. Look, he says, I'm, I can say what I want. I, I'm not trying to climb the ladder. I, this is my last coaching job. You know, he's like the old uncle or aunt that just says whatever they want. Yeah. He, he, can, he can criticize folks now. Dingwell off play action on first and 10. Dingwell stays in bounds and pays the price. Craig Bills takes another good lick on the quarterback. And Adam Dingwell says, Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Bills. Keep your eyes open, head up. That's exactly what Bills did and got a shot on Dingwell. Head up, eyes open. That's uh, another good shot. But getting back to your point about the coaches, Brock Bronco Mendenhall, I think, has made the point too. It's about coaching, mentoring, and taking care of young men, helping them grow. And he thinks that a lot of folks in the profession for money instead now. Dingwell screen complete. That's Chase Price, who momentarily slips away. Then he's dropped. Third down coming. And uh, no surprise that both of these head coaches, when you talk about guys who have stayed through it, Mike Riley, Oregon State. Now he's left for the NFL for a while here, and then went right back to Oregon State. They worked together at Oregon State, and then when Rocky Long was the head coach at New Mexico, Bronco Mendenhall was his defensive coordinator and uh, just like a truly great old friends and so how much you guys talk they said no it's yeah. it's like old friends you pick up where you left off when when uh, Bronco said when they walked into the bowl lunch he said I felt like I was right back to work for Rocky again slant is incomplete fourth down coming I, I still think it's unique to hear coaches criticize other coaches for changing jobs and and, and in this sense and Bronco was really outspoken about it, saying, look, you don't leave a place after one year. Think about what you do to those kids when you leave after you get them to commit to being there. And that's a tough deal. Again, we've heard that from a lot of different sources, but you have not, we have not really heard it from uh, head coaches, certainly not as vocal as Rocky Long and uh, Bronco and Paul were. And the point being with, with Bronco, there's coach been coaching changes job, changing jobs for as long as college football has sure. been around. But the point that Bronco Mendenhall is making is the, the increasing money is accelerating the pace. And he says, uh, I just feel bad for the players who, who have been put through the ringer in a lot of different places. Yeah, that gets lost very often. You have players who are making commitments for four or five years and they think they're going to be there with a the coach. And, you know, they've set their life up according to that. And then the guy is gone. And the guy says that he's doing it for the benefit of his family. Well, there are a lot of players who are hurt by that. There's no question about it. A tip of the cap to a couple people who did it right during this silly season as Jamal Williams picks it up. How about Coach Anderson leaving Utah State, but calling and texting and getting in touch with personally every player to explain yes. the move going from a Utah State to a major power. And he team. built that program over several years, so no problem with him moving up the ladder and the way he said goodbye to his players. A lot of guys simply leave without talking to the players. And also tip your cap to Barry Alvarez for saying, look, Paul Christ would be a candidate we would be interested in, but because of the myriad changes at uh, numerous changes at the University of Pittsburgh over the past years, we're not going to consider Paul Chris out of respect for that program. Third and short, Jamel. Well, what really struck me is something Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall told us. Uh, he said money is overriding tradition and maybe overriding amateurism. He said, I think it's sad for college football. The college game, if we're not careful, could be lost. Very interesting quote. Indeed. There's third and one for Mendenhall's Cougars. And again, also, Bronco Mendenhall was eager to share those opinions with us. He clearly wanted to address what he saw as a major well, issue. He sees it as leadership. Coaching. Leadership and what he should be doing at BYU. That pass is complete to Oppo, but Leon McFadden, no, it's incomplete. McFadden all over Oppo on third and short. Didn't we talk about that? You, you can't throw that screen when you have man-to-man -man coverage. It just doesn't make sense. And it's corner, he's playing him. He's coming, he sees it. You can't throw that. You have to check out of it. It doesn't work. And that guy's a three-time all-conference, first-team all-conference corner who will be playing on Sundays. And by the way, if you saw Leon McFadden hold the W, that's uh, for Make-A-Wish Foundation, one of the major beneficiaries of the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. 
And so the officials have said, look, we, we usually crack down on any kind of symbols after uh, a play. But for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, they're going to let you do it tonight. Smart. Yes. Very smart. And appropriate. San Diego State football after that play by McFadden, the senior corner from Inglewood. Adam Dingwell, who took over on October 20th in the comfort behind win against Nevada. San Diego State won in overtime. And it's off to Moema. There's Ogletree, and Moema slips out of the tackle to pick up through. Moema, we've talked about his ability to get yards after contact. And Ogletree is mystified by that, how he couldn't bring him down. But he's done that to a lot of guys all season long. He's stocky, he's strong, he's got good feet, change of direction. I mean, it's a tough moving target, 25 yards after contact tonight. Escobar, the tight end in motion. Moema runs behind the block from Escobar. Bouncing outside, Adam Moema. Across the 50 again, Van Noy finally trips him up. Well, two things. Great blocking at the point of attack, but great vision to get to the edge and make guys miss on your own. When you talk about complete teamwork there, I mean, Young getting a good block at the point of attack, and really getting outside, Moana just, that's nice. He's a better back than I think a lot of people realize. Had a good one here last year, and Ronnie Hillman now playing for the Broncos. At the end of one, San Diego State off to a 3 nothing start against BYU. Have a good day. You're watching ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. In San Diego, California, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. At the home of the Chargers and the home of the San Diego State Aztecs, a home game. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill. Statistical research provided by Champ Khan for the game tonight in San Diego. Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> Digwell over the middle. Complete. There's Escobar, the talented tight end with the first big catch of the night for the junior from Rancho Santa Margarita. Uh, he's unique. He's a guy that has great hands, a great catching radius, doesn't catch everything with his body, can really use that frame 6'6", six, six, and then watch the athleticism, change of direction, trying to make something happen down the field. He's not a guy that just falls to the ground, and he's a guy. That is going to play in the NFL. Question is when. Yep. This is his junior season, so Escobar weighing the NFL possibilities. That 24 yard gainer sets up San Diego State. Chase Price, the redshirt freshman, gets a couple there at running back. Escobar, first team all Mountain West Conference semi finalist for the John Mackey Award. Won by Tyler Eifert of Notre Dame. That's the top tight end in college football. We've seen some the, good ones this season. Yeah, absolutely. Eifert, Ertz at Stanford. How about Levine Toilolo yep. at Stanford yep. as well? Yeah, a couple of good ones. As uh, Harbaugh and Shaw loaded up on tight ends for the past few years. And Escobar is certainly, uh, certainly talented. Screen. Minimal gain on the outside. Jordan Johnson on the stop. Short gain for Tim Busy, just the ninth catch of his junior season. Bringing us to third down, which means all eyes on Ezekiel Anza yeah, and Kyle Van Dorn. And, and rest assured that Dingwell is aware of it. He'll know exactly where Ansa is. They will probably allocate an extra man to him. And Dingwell can use his feet to buy some time. Out of the eye on third and six, Muwemba running. So inside the 20 to set up another field goal attempt for San Diego State. Well, that's a lot of respect because they're afraid of taking a sack against that defense. And also a lot of confidence that you can run the ball against this defense, one of the top five 
I say to set up a field goal, not so fast. What did Rocky Long say? Hey, you know what? I'm an old guy. Now, mind you, he's only 62. He's a year older than Nick Saban, so not, not so old. He says, you know what? That, that's why we go for it. This will be the 22nd time they've gone for it on fourth down this year. Play fake. Dingwell caught by the fullback Young for first down to the 10. Yeah, we, we asked Rocky Long about those fourth down decisions. I mean, how long do you think about it? I don't think, think about it. it. I just do it. Win for two in overtime against Nevada to get the win. I can do what I want. I'm an old guy. I don't care what people think about me going for something or going for two. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and he is uh, Jack LaLanne buff for a 62-year-old, I might add. Oh, man. First and goal, San Diego State. Boema. ABAR. You know, there's nothing fancy about what San Diego State is doing. I mean, it is power left, power wide right, kick out with the fullback, a double team, pull the backside guard, and then let Muama get in there and read it, figure out where he wants to go. And BYU knew where they, they were going to get a lot of this. They expected it all week long. Bronco said, yeah, we know it's going to be power, 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 then uh, a deep throw, and shifting, shifting, shifting. We know exactly what we're going to get. Yeah, you got to stop it, though. Boema again on second and goal. Pushing the pile to be third and goal from the six. Spencer Hadley credited to stop for BYU. Well, now that you've gone for it on fourth down, are you committed? I mean, do you have two plays now to try to get the touchdown? I mean, you didn't want the field goal before. Do you commit all the way now again? Does it depend on what you get on third down? I, get I, to the two of the three? I think so. I think so. Ten play of the drive coming for the Aztecs. Shifting with the two backs. And now Moema motions out. Third and goal. Dingwell. Throws it incomplete. Fourth down and we'll find our answer. Good composure. Had nothing. Knew he had a field goal in his back pocket. Decided not to risk it. Martin's coming out. So the kicking unit comes on. Chance Martin, the senior who's made now nine of his last ten. Big kick of his year was a 35-yarder to tie Nevada. The game the Aztecs won in overtime. In a 27-yarder earlier. This is 23. Six-nothing start for San Diego State. Two defensive-minded coaches, two defensive-minded teams. Only two scores have been through the uprights. Six-nothing assets. Saturday, East Carolina against Louisiana Lafayette. The RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl, where San Diego State was beaten by the Cajuns last year. And then Mako Bowl Las Vegas matches 19th ranked Boise State against Washington as Capital One Bowl Week rolls on. Uh, in Las Vegas as Washington and Boise State gets ready for the Mako Bowl Las Vegas. I guess that's a fun trip. Oh, I would not want to have the pie on my face. Why you did but Boise is used to making that trip for sure. Ball slam from inside the five. To the 23. Some more photos from Las Vegas. Now there's now look at look at Pete. Yeah, Chris Peterson. Chris Peterson. Yeah, Demure, Demure. It's now, a big now Sark. Hat next to him, the Sark. Look at the smile. Come on. Come on, Sark. <laughs> hey, you think Washington Rod? Uh, big team in 2013. I think they're gonna be really good. I think that entire Pac-12 North Division is going to be really tough. Stanford, Oregon, Washington, Oregon State. That's a tough deal next year. I mean, Stanford, Oregon, Washington all will be potential national title contenders in 2013. Yes, I said national title contenders, including for the Huskies, with all of the talent they're bringing back and a good recruiting class. Adding Jamal Williams, the true freshman, gets a couple. You know, we've seen this out of BYU all season. You know, 
inconsistent on offense, struggling, trying to get it going. Defense hanging in there, getting stops, but just they're just not quite there. You know, the big numbers for BYU, other than the win at Georgia Tech, they went 41-17. Arch pass incomplete, third down again. But the big offensive numbers against Weber State, against Hawaii, against New Mexico State, against Idaho, against the softer, in some cases very soft, of course, very well soft schedule. So you have the third down now. You want to get the ball down. So we've not seen a ball really thrown over 15 yards for BYU. And now part of that is that they know they're going to get pressure and they got to get rid of the ball. But those two receivers to the top of the screen, those are big guys. You, you've got to give them a chance. you got to put the ball out there for them. BYU has only 39 yards of offense. Lark flings it outside, and there's Hoffman, just with the doctor ordered, Rod. And he's six foot three and a half. Long, lean, athletic. You, know, you have to give him a chance to make a play. Two catches for Hoffman tonight, giving him 92 on the season, over 1,100 receiving yards. Lark throwing again, looking for Hoffman again, this time dragging. It's knocked away by the safety, Eric Pinkins. Well, you see the thing with Lark, though, is that they can push the ball further down the field with him because he's got a stronger arm. Riley Nelson is more of the dink and dunk and then running from the pocket kind of quarterback, not as much down the field. So Lark gives them that opportunity to push it down the field more. Kind of old school. Steve Young, you know, back to the quarterback. Jim McMahon. Yeah. yeah. McMahon certainly had a memorable moment in the stadium. Lark. Complete to Oppo at the 43rd down and five coming. Three different starting quarterbacks this year for BYU. The freshman Taysom Hill, who's holding the clipboard. He is expected back for spring ball. And then there's Riley Nelson, number 13, who's played and not played because of a period of injuries, mostly rib injuries. And now James Lark starts the regular season finale, starts in the bowl game. Third down. Does he handle the pressure if they bring it? And they will bring it from all sorts of angles. Heavy pressure coming from the Aztecs. Lark throws into the blitz complete. Balslev makes the grab for the 49. Speaking of the BYU quarterback legacy. Rich tradition, Gifford Nielsen, Mark Wilson, Jim McMahon, and the great one, Steve Young. Ty Dedmer, the Heisman the Trophy Heisman winner. Guy. And Lark kind of stood in there on that last play. There was Brandon Dolman, who quarterback at BYU. Yeah, Brandon Dolman was a uh, dual threat quarterback for BYU running and throwing. Lark sends it long and incomplete, intended for Oppo. Leon McFadden, they're in coverage. Well, that's a single coverage, and you have to take those shots. And they didn't get it there, but you have to take those shots. If you can't beat man coverage on the outside, and you think you have great receivers, you, you got a problem but you have to be able to take shots when you get that. Dangerous throwing Leon McFadden's way. The senior corner has three picks. He returned two of them for touchdowns this year. Williams inside give on second down. It's third and long again for BYU. Largent on the tackle. And San Diego State they bring the pressure on third down. You know, they're not big up front, but they will try to disguise it. They'll bring five, they'll bring six, but the trick to figure out offensively is which five or six are coming and where are they coming from. On this drive, BYU has converted on third and eight and third and five. It's third and eight again. Look, drop! Candle Holder coming on the corner blitz from the weak side. Where are they coming from? That's the issue on third down. You know they're going to bring them. You have to identify, and they could not identify this one. I mean, this one comes from the edge over here. They bring a couple of them, and they don't pick it up. They don't see it. They don't recognize it. There's Holder on the corner blitz, and they have pressure from the other side to keep him in the pocket. 
First sack of the game for San Diego State. First of the year for the sophomore corner holder. Nearly got the punt again. Stevenson gets it away. Fair catch for Vizzy right around the 15. Aztecs blitzing from all directions. They celebrate when they get home with a sack. College football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big bank banking, it's better. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And the Venture Card from Capital One, earn double miles you can actually use. In the gas lamp district, downtown San Diego, some of the hot spots, Cougars just marching right past them. San Diego. Mm -hmm. Speak German. Riley Nelson warming up on the BYU sideline. We do expect to see the senior lefty from Logan, Utah at some point tonight for the Cougars. San Diego State football. Mawima running on the right side. There's Kavinga on the stop along with Ezekiel Ansa. Ziggy. Ziggy and company are struggling with this San Diego State offense. They've got more than 185 yards of offense already, and this defense normally doesn't give up much more than about 266 a game. Aztecs shift again. Moema again. Third down coming. Now, one of the questions that scouts had about Ansa is, you know, how well he played against the run. You know, was he just a pass rushing guy? And, and we're seeing signs of his ability to take on blockers, to disengage and make tackles like he did on that last play. Not just the tremendous pass rushing abilities, an amazing story. Bronco Menel says one of these days will be a movie. Ezekiel Onza's improbable trip from Accra, Ghana to BYU. Next stop, the National Football League. Dingwell. Avoids the rush, flings incomplete. Hadley, there in coverage, it was Kyle Van Noy flying in over Adam Moema, almost got to Dingwell. Yeah, he's right here. Watch him come off the edge. And this guy is incredibly athletic. He's considering leaving to go to the NFL. Look at that. I mean, that's, that's effort, that's desire, that's athleticism. Van Noy, the junior from Reno, has 11 and a half sacks and five forced fumbles on the season. Yeah. Did you mention a movie about Ziggy? Yes. Who, <laughs> who's going to play Bronco Mindenhall? You, you tossed out Brad Pitt, by the way, for the uh, handsome Bronco Mendenhall. He said, no, no, it's got to be somebody who's hard on their luck, who's uh, desperate. Uh, <laughs> so I'll just toss out Mel Gibson, you know. <laughs> Well, will we see Riley Nelson when we come back oh, to see you? Are not go. getting any gifts from him. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Welcome once again to the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week, San Diego State versus BYU, and Qualcomm Stadium, where our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear. More driven. You see the blimp. Uh huh? Bakers beat the Supersonics. <laughs> no, that. That's old school. That is old school. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, going old school from San Diego. Riley Nelson into quarterback BYU, handing off on first down for a minimal game. So the senior quarterback who has battled injuries throughout his BYU career, played a year at Utah State prior to that, seeing action in the bowl game. Well, we expected to see him tonight. Didn't know exactly how early or how much he would play. He is said to be about 85% with that rib injury. Riley Nelson says after this game, somebody calls me with a future in football, I'll listen. But he knows this is most likely his last game playing uh, the game 
game that he loves. Whatever's next for Riley Nelson, he's going to succeed at it. A very mature young man, a, a leader. That's one of the reasons why Bronco Mendenhall and Brandon Dolman have been so loyal, as we discussed with Jamel Hill, to the senior from Logan, Riley Nelson. Yeah, uh, Bronco Mendenhall is a big fan, but he, he's not a fan of seeing him take shots like he did on that last play, straight up the middle. Nick Tenoff just came in on touch and blasted him. And again, third down situations, pressure. They've not been good at identifying it and picking it up. Nelson scrambles on third and nine, right through the blitz, diving for a first down, and that's where Riley Nelson excels. Well, and that's the difference between Nelson and Lark. Lark is a pocket passer. Nelson gives you the ability to get something from the quarterback in running the football. He can make a play, extend a play, and you can run design runs with him. That's the first rush for BYU to go 10-plus tonight. First big play. They had zero passes of 15-plus. Option, toss. Williams ridden out. A chance to check with the birthday gal, Jamel. Thanks, Carter. As you all mentioned, this has been a very difficult year for Riley Nelson, and Bronco Mendenhall has expressed his loyalty, and the fans have been so-so. Uh, but I asked Bronco Mendenhall, how should Riley Nelson's legacy be remembered? And he said, Riley is the most competitive, toughest football player I have ever coached. How anyone else remembers him isn't even relevant to me. He says, I love who he is and how he plays the game. I think Riley Nelson is going to have a long legacy around BYU, one way or the other. Rolling on second down, it's picked off, off the hands of Oppo, into Eric Pinkins. For a touchdown. Flag is down on the play. As it stands, a 39-yard interception for a touchdown on the deflected pass into the hands of Eric Pinkins. During the return, block below the waist on a return team number 90. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So wipe out the touchdown. Doesn't look like that ball was thrown behind him. At all. Hoppo was there and had a shot at it, but was that Wade 12 who had a hand in the woods? So the senior corner, Josh Wade's the one who knocks it away and then into the hands of Eric Pankins. And now let's look at the penalty. Everett Bead. Block below the waist to wipe out the touchdown. San Diego State football after the interception. Eric Pinkett made the interception, but Josh Wade made a heck of a play. That's a great play. That, that's man coverage, and that's Josh Wade winning against Hawk Rock there, getting that hand in there, deflecting it. He owned it right there. From the 29, Adam Moema slips as he gets to the 23. You know, they've run 30 plays offensively. 17 of those plays have gone to Moema. The sophomore running back that took over after Ronnie Hillman left early last year at San Diego State. Third round pick of the Denver Broncos made the roster. So Moema has had to step into those shoes and has done a good job. Off the interception from BYU. Second and three for the Aztecs. Boema met right around the first down line by Spencer Hadley and Craig Bills. Flag down. Holding 78 offense. 
15 yard penalty, replay second down. Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow night on ESPN. Ball State has won six straight. They go for their seventh straight in their first bowl win ever in the b Grady's Bowl St. Petersburg against George O'Leary in Central Florida, 7.30 Eastern tomorrow night, part of the Capital One Bowl League. Like the Mac? Yeah, how about a tremendous year for Big the year. Mac. Northern Big Illinois uh, into the Orange Bowl, of course, but a terrific year for the Mac from start to finish. <laughs> Boema drops by yeah. Kyle Vandor. Yeah, talk about terrific year. That man has had a terrific season. Might be his last at BYU. There's Kyle Van Noy moving away from that edge spot, finding a way inside using his quickness, and, and the scouts love him. He's versatile, he can play with his hand on the ground. If he wants to rush from the edge, he can play in space, he can cover. He, he does a lot. He's got great size to go along with it. It's 6'3", 235. He seems like the ideal guy in a 3-4 defense yep. like he is now with BYU, that outside linebacker spot. Dingwall's pass nearly picked again by Ezekiel Ansa. Nearly got his second interception of the game. Well, when those two get going like that, you have problems. I mean, he can make plays all over the field. Ansa can. And so can Kyle Van Noy. And they can put you in tough spots, 4th and 17, because these two guys make plays. You're talking about a guy who is 6'6 six, six, and has a 39-inch vertical to go along with him. Also back to return the punt. McMorrow, the freshman, rolls into the end zone. So a touchback. And BYU will get it at the 20. So San Diego State unable to turn the takeaway into points. Kyle Van Noy and Ezekiel Alonso turn up the pressure. Force the Aztec punt. Coming up on the Reese's Halftime Report, Wisconsin makes their coaching move official. We'll preview Mako Bowl, Las Vegas, Boise against Washington, and Jesse and David. A little speed rush of hot topics. Join us then. Let's get you back out to the game. Carter and Rod, take it away. What about the NBA breakdown we were calling for, guys? <laughs> I think they'll get to it. They'll, they'll give us something. The other guys coming up on the uh, Reese's Halftime Report. A busy bowl season. Capital One Bowl Week. The extended best week of the year. James Lark back at quarterback for BYU. The senior who started tonight, just his second start. Completes over the middle. That's David Foot, the senior backup running back for a pickup of about nine. Hey, how costly was that penalty? for uh, San Diego State on the on the pick. Wipes out the touchdown. I yep. mean, that was going to be returned by Pinkett for a touchdown, yep. whether there was a low block or not. And you don't get six, you don't get three. Slant complete. Hoffman for a pickup of six. Let's go back to the penalty. Yeah, you get a great play by Wade, and then the pick by Pinkins, and then you have the, the unnecessary block illegal block and it takes points off the board. That's the sophomore and the Everett Deed who is called for the block below the waist. And Lark scrambles for a couple. Third down coming with the clock winding down. BYU takes a timeout prior to third down here. So minute 23 to go. Let's talk about the BYU offense, uh, Rod, as you pointed out when they put up big numbers at times throughout the season but against some of the lesser opponents. Now you try and switch gears a little bit going into this bowl game to say, all right, let's go back a little bit more to four wide, back to the BYU roots of throwing it. Yeah. Uh, nearing halftime, how do you evaluate the BYU offense tonight in San Diego? Well, you know, they've had problems. And it, it, there's this initial reaction to blame the quarterback. But up front, they're not handling the pressure. I mean, they're getting blitz from every angle, and they're not seeing any of it, and that hurts them. And in the long run for this offense to get back to where they used to be, where the quarterback could really throw it down the field, push that football, they got to get better up front, too. I mean, they've got talented receivers, athletic receivers, but they can't find time to get the ball down the field. And they're not beating the man coverage on the outside right now anyway. I mean, everything's got to come out quick. 
Only one senior on the BYU offensive line since the center Braden Hansen is injured. Sophomore Tussau starts in his place. Slant complete. Hoffman makes the grab. Fourth catch of the game for the junior Cody Hoff. You see Lark that time. He's retreating as he throws the football because it, it's coming on him right now. Over a minute remaining in the first half. Lark scrambles out of the pocket. Balls short of the 50. One timeout remaining for BYU. They don't have much in the kicking game. Sorensen and Stevenson, the longest field goal BYU's made this year is 35. Well, they've got time. They've got time and they have a timeout. Look, hit as he throws. Again, a, a wide open blitzer with a path to the quarterback, Vanessa Harris. Well, we talked about it at the very beginning of the game. This defense is designed to be deceptive and to get hits on the quarterback. They're not big. They just bring a lot of different people from different angles, and that time it was Vance Harris. Bronco Mendenhall said it's almost like a fast break basketball team. And you know you're going to pressure you if you can get it over the top. You're going to get some uh, easy dunks, but BYU has not gotten the runouts tonight. Complete on third and three to move the chains. Clock stops temporarily. Hoffman makes the catch. Marcus Andrews in coverage. That Sorensen as long as 35. Well, you have Alpha at the bottom. He's six foot three and a half. He's going to have single coverage. Mark looks right at him and nearly throws a pick again. Boy, King Holder jumps the route. Yeah. Nearly got it. Total miscommunication. You know, Oppo's looking up the field, doesn't expect it. Look where he goes. He's running a deeper slant, and this ball's thrown behind him. Holder had the sack, nearly had the pick. Yeah. And keep in mind that, you know, Barks only started one game, New Mexico State. He, he was third, fourth on the depth chart for a long time. He hasn't worked with these guys for as long as some of the other quarterbacks here have. Lark steps up, heaves long, incomplete. Intended for Skyler Ridley. Andrews in coverage, 15 seconds left, third down. And it just, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look good, doesn't look smooth. And this offense is completely out of kilter now. When you get a defense that blitzes you like this an awful lot, it'll make you look that way and make you look worse. But you have to find a way to do something. And you know, right now they're trying to get in the field goal range, but, but they just can't protect. Over the middle, caught. Inside the 10 to the 5. Mahina with just the eighth catch of his sophomore season. Nine seconds, clock stops temporarily after the 38-yard gain. BYU will use its timeout here. One of the few times that San Diego State played some zone, left the middle open, tight end down the middle. There you see him, Mahina, completely free in the middle of the field, and you've got time. You've got a timeout. You also have the ability with about nine seconds here, you can get two plays done. As long as you don't take a sack or you don't run the football in the field of play, you can run two plays down here. So running the football is out right now for BYU with nine seconds. Uh, you can't do it. You cannot take that chance. And no timeouts. But if you want to have two shots at it, you have to make the decision pretty quickly if that first play isn't there, to throw the ball away, give yourself two or three seconds left on the clock for one more play. And you can kick the field goal if you want. Mark is five for eight on this drive. First and goal, Cougars. Nine seconds left in the half. Mark throws incomplete. Five seconds left. Intended for false left. 
And the kicking unit comes out. I would think so. Got to keep it. See if Meredith applies the pressure there on Mark. You, you can't feel confident that you got a chance of making that one play now and get a touchdown when you haven't done it the entire first half and you're getting blitz, you know, completely. Now, can you feel confident in the chip shot from your field goal kicker who's 5 for 11 on the season? 23-yard attempt from Sorensen is easily good. Points on the board. A three up there for BYU to close the half. So the only scoring in the first half of the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Three field goals. Hey, as poorly as BYU played in the first half to be down 6-3, they ought to feel pretty good about this right now. San Diego State's won seven straight. BYU's won five straight in the series. We send it down to Jamel Hill. Coach, your defense was holding them in check until that last play. Why was the tight end so wide open down the middle of the field? Oh, we had an assignment error. We have a guy that's supposed to run with the seam route, and he didn't run with the seam route. Now, your offense uh, has also not taken advantage of some opportunities. What can you do in the second half to get a little bit more production? Well, once we get down the red zone, we got to score touchdowns. And finally, you had Adam Lewin, but you gave him the ball. Uh, you fed him consistently in the first half. How do you keep him going in the second half? Well, hopefully he'll run just like he did in the, in the first half, and the uh, offensive line continues to block well. We'll be able to do it in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. The night the lights went out in San Diego, at least halfway off, somebody hit the dimmer switch. Now we send you on to the Reese's Halftime Report. Joe, Jesse, and David. Capital One Bowl Week rolls on from San Diego, California. Yes, those lights were dimmed with a fireworks show here. The San Diego County Credit Union Point Poinsettia Bowl. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, and uh, just as you would expect when you have two guys who've worked on defensive staffs together at Oregon State and New Mexico, Rocky Long and Bronco Mendenhall, it's a 6-3 to three yeah. football game at that. Yeah, but part of that, too, is, you know, not good offense. And then part of it, too, is giving up on things. It's, you know, Tess and Jesse and David talked about at halftime. BYU has to run the football 12 attempts in the first half. And that's got to take some of the edge off of the pressure if they run it a little bit more. But they just haven't been able to do that yet or tried it enough. And for San Diego State, when you're inside the 20, you have to get touchdowns. You cannot settle for field goals, and they've got to find a way to get Escobar, their tight end, involved in the offense. Two trips to the red zone, two field goals, and then that uh, touchdown negated by the penalty. That's why a 6-3 to three lead for San Diego State, even though they have the statistical advantage in all the categories on BYU. The former WAC and Mountain West Conference foes meeting with BYU as an independent San Diego State co-champs of the Mountain West riding a seven-game winning streak. Balls the touchback gives us a chance to check in with Jamel Hill. Carter and Rod, I talked to Coach Bronco Mendenhall at halftime about what they can do to get some more offensive production. He said a key is punting better. They have to create some easier field position. Field position. I also asked him who will start at quarterback. He said it'll be James Lark, but if he struggles, we could see Riley Nelson again. But right now he said he thought James Lark was just throwing the ball a little bit better. Hunting. Okay. Bradley Stevenson has been really good as their punter. Only averaging 35 to punt tonight. Lark begins the second half at quarterback. The senior from St. George slides for maybe half a I'm yard. I'm not sure I want to take my time in position and play for punting. Well, that kind of tells you the uh, state of the BYU offense, frankly, in 2012. I mean, the, the numbers have been up and down mostly, other than Georgia Tech, mostly against the weaker points of the BYU schedule. But they have not handled this aggressive, aggressive blitzing San Diego State defense so far tonight. Well, you're right. And, and I think that's where it starts. I mean, you've got to protect better if you're going to throw the football. You have to give your guys on the outside, those receivers, just a little bit more 
time to beat those corners in that man coverage. You, you, you got to run the ball some, but not on third and seven. Here. You can't. You can't run it here at all. They motion the running back Williams into the slot, four wide. Here come the Aztecs. Lark time to throw completes. Cody Hoffman makes his sixth catch of the game. I like this. Changing tempo, changing pace. Maybe, maybe that helps him a little bit. Helps him identify pressure some. BYU's moved the change. They're 8 of 12 on third down now. Williams gets only a couple before Marcus Andrews gets to him. Well, th this undersized defense has held Williams in check. Williams hasn't been able to run for much already. You know, Meredith up front doesn't get a lot of attention. You know, but he's a 275 pounder. He's the biggest guy they have up front. Everybody else goes at about 250, 240, 255. So it's not a big defensive line. But they come at you from all angles, including right up the middle on second down. Falslev makes the catch, but no room to move. Nick Tenoff, the linebacker on the stop. And how many times have you seen that wide receiver screen work tonight? Uh, zero. Zero? Yeah. No. That'd be none. <laughs> I think our uh, I think our entire boot is with you on that one, including Champ Conner. Yeah, until you can challenge these guys down the field, all that short stuff, forget about it. It's not going to work. I mean, keep an extra guy in the block if you need to, but you, you got to challenge them down the field. To a dragging Hoffman for a BYU first down. Well, that's been the answer for the BYU offense. Number two, Cody Hoffman. Well, crossing routes work against man-to-man -man coverage because you are running away from the defender. You're running across the field, and he can't stay with that. He doesn't have the right angle. So crossing routes work, but you need time to do it. They had time that time. Clark over the middle, missed Friel, the tight end, who was matched up against the uh, much smaller Burhey. Andrews got the pressure. James Lark, the third starting quarterback for BYU this year. We've seen Riley Nelson for one possession. Nelson threw an interception. So Lark is in there. Taysom Hill, the freshman. Also started the quarterback of BYU this year, injured, expected back for spring football. Lark leaning back as he throws, so an easy interception. He was leaning back away from the pressure, picked off by Silvano. Second interception by San Diego State tonight. Andrews gets the pressure again. Well, you, you have to get the ball out there. You can't throw a punt. Now, look at this. Look at all this space. Look at this lock up here, and look at it here. They are daring BYU to throw the ball down the field. But when you throw it off your back foot and hang it up like that, you're going to get a pick. But you have to be able to take advantage of the fact that they're taking the safety out of the middle. They're daring you to beat their corners. And BYU can't get it done right now. In 12 games this year, San Diego State had 11 interceptions. They have two tonight. An offense back to the ground game out of Bowema. You know, there are a lot of quarterbacks watching this thing and they're going, ooh, what I wouldn't give to have. No safety sitting in the middle. Locked up man coverage. There are wide receivers across the country also going, really? Yeah. Man coverage? The whole game? Can't wait. <laughs> As you said, Ron, I mean, they're, they're San Diego State daring BYU to throw the football, and you can understand why, other than the one big hitter in the passing game to the heat of the tight ends. You've got two quarterbacks, they've each thrown an interception, and the Aztec fast break blitzing defense as BYU flustered. But having said all that and seen all this, guess what? It's a 6-3 to three game. And San Diego State last two drives have gone three and out, three and out, zero yards. They picked up two here. 
Third and long again. Only one third down conversion in the game for the Aztecs. Dingwell rolls away from the pressure. Dances down the sideline. Where did he step out? Ezekiel Onsa goes back to where he thinks he, oh, well, the guy for just started playing football two years ago. Now he's officiating. Yeah, but his determination, his hustle, I mean, this is going to please scouts. He's right here. Watch his pressure inside and watch he gets back in to make the play. He gets through. He's there. He doesn't quit. He doesn't give up. He gets back down the field. He's still trying to get in on the play. But he forced this thing to the edge. Ons is out there for the punt as well. Oh, the freshman punter nearly has a block. Kyle Van Noy, he did get a hand on it. Van Noy got a hand on it. Blocked. BYU gets it right around the 36. When you are on the punt team and you hear that second noise, thump, thump, that is bad news. Kyle Van Noy gets his hand on the football. Yeah, number three coming from the right side there, lays out. We talked about how athletic he is, how long he is. Look at this. This guy can play. That's textbook. This guy can play. Now can BYU turn it into points, turn it into a touchdown. Cougar football from the 35. Lark the quarterback. Incomplete. Passing Intended for Ridley. Well, give a little credit to these corners in San Diego State. I mean, they, they've not shied away. They've locked up. They've played it well. Now Hoffman's down at the bottom. If he gets it, he's got to, he's got to beat him. Lark rolls the other way. Option toss. Jamal Williams met as soon as he grabs it. Dropped immediately by Nat Burhe. This San Diego State defense is matching BYU's defense. Tackle for tackle. Williams only 13 rushing yards in the game. BYU has only 34 rushing yards in the game. Same deal, third down. Where's it coming from? Where's the pressure coming from? Find it. It's coming from everywhere. Yeah. Another incomplete. Yeah, well, it makes you get rid of the ball faster. Even though they don't get home, it speeds everything up. What did you say earlier about the full court press in basketball? They're turning them over in the backboard. Yeah. Offense stays on the field for the 29th time this season. BYU's going forward on fourth down. Too far for them to kick a field goal. Not, not enough confidence in that. Lark has missed his last four passes prior to fourth down. A timeout for BYU. Will Bronco Mendenhall send the offense back out after the timeout? Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Jamel Hill told us that the punting game was going to key, be a key part of the BYU offense in the second half. And sure enough, out of the timeout, 4th and 10, there's Riley Stevenson. So that cost him a timeout to make this decision. Now can Stevenson hang it in there. Perfectly executed by BYU down at the one. So credit Stevenson. It's Daniel Sorensen who gets down there to grab it at the one. Right call. Monday night football on Saturday night. Falcons Lions Saturday 8:30 Eastern. Matt Ryan and the Falcons can pledge home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They beat the Lions. Calvin Johnson and the Lions. Coverage begins at seven. Monday night countdown presented by Applebee's. Again, that's Monday night football on Saturday night. So the Falcons are for real. Are they the best in the NFC? Ooh. 
Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Don't hesitate. You can I, do it. I think the San Francisco 49ers would have so there, there you go. Okay. There you go. Agreed. Okay. I was wondering why you were hesitating. Well, I, I was hesitating because the 49ers. I, mean, I like the Niners. I like New Emma. The sophomore is averaging 113 rushing yards at 17th in the nation. Moema now in this game has 83 rushing yards and another 34 on officially a reception, but a, a short completion that Moema rolled through contact. Had 119 yards and two touchdowns against Boise State. Another 200-yard game against San Jose State this year. Number 255 in the regular season finale at Wyoming. That's his career high. That's a tough run at that altitude. Moema gets it again on first down. Brandon Ogletree there on the stop. Well, the thing that impresses me also is that he's carrying the load tonight. I mean, he's usually part of a two-back deal, but now he's the only guy. I mean, Walter Casey is out, can't play, bad knee. And now all those carries that Casey normally would get, they're being carried by the same guy right there. BYU played Notre Dame down to the wire. Bronco Mendenhall said, Adam Moema, we're preparing like and prepared for Notre Dame Sierra Wood. Well, it's pass incomplete. So here, oh, there's a flag down. We will check the flag. Interference, defense number two, spot foul, automatic first down. Spot foul because it's less than 15 yards. You saw Bronco Mendenhall saying, hey, it was uncatchable, it was over his head. Remember, the officials have made it clear that they assume that a guy can make a great catch, a great play. So if it's overthrown, it's, it's got to be really, really overthrown, and that is not. That's clearly catchable. So basically, if Hadley doesn't interfere there, the official's judgment, the receiver can get there. That's Denso, the receiver. So spot foul because it's less than 15 yards, first and 10 Aztecs. Play fake. Complete to the tight end, Adam Roberts. Well, he took the shorter throw. He actually had the shield wide open in the flat about seven, eight yards deeper. I mean, nobody there, but he took the safer, shorter throw. That's what was right in front of him. Now, Dingwell has really progressed from that opening game he had in the battle when he came in, and he ran the ball a lot in that game. Didn't look down the field so much, but now he's becoming more confident. Still, not that experienced and not willing to take chances. Back to Mawimma on second and six. Look at him oh. pick his way oh. through the Cougar defense for a first down. Love the vision. What's better, the vision or the ability to change direction with sticking your foot in the ground and going the other way? Watch him when he gets to the edge. That's one side move. Now that one right there. Just cut it back in. Great vision to see it. And then plant that one foot and go. BYU averages only 84 rushing yards a game. That is allowed. That's second in the nation. We have 110 so far. Dingwell back to the air. Knocked away on a good play by Jordan Johnson. He's trying to get the Bryce Butler the transfer from USC out there. Watch the coverage here. That's Johnson. You think these players don't care about bowl games? Oh. See the, that kind of effort? There, there's a misnomer. Sometimes, oh. you, sometimes you can sometimes you can see guys uh, going half speed. Not tonight. Dingwell tripped up by Kyle Van Noy. Third down. Well, the advantage that BYU got by pinning San Diego State down around the one is gone. Even if they get the stop here, there's plenty of room for San Diego State to kick this ball away. They've negated that advantage by the punch. San Diego State, amazingly, only one for nine on third down. It's a tough BYU D.
Pick up the blitz. Complete. Where's Butler down? Right around the first down. From the spot, it looks like first and 10, San Diego State. Just enough. Yeah, they're just methodical, scrappy, just doing what they need to do. Watch Butler here. That ball is down low, comes up with it. He's kind of rolling up the ball. Timeout, San Diego State. San Diego State. 5.40 to go in the third. Rocky Long and the Aztecs hanging on to the three-point lead. ESPN College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by Ashford University. Technology changes everything. The Capital One Cash Rewards Card with a 50% annual bonus. And Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live moss. If you're one of those who's been watching college football all year and saying, I'm sick of these uh, basketball-like scores, and high scoring and high tempo, give me some classic old-school pullback. And the backfield, hard hit. Well, here you go. You, you think people are asking me for No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think they're asking I'm sure for somebody <laughs> is. <laughs> I, I think Rocky Long is. I think that's the answer. Moema. Drop for a two-yard loss, like he told us. So, you know, I, I wish that I wish that we could go back. I know we're not, but I wish we could go back. <laughs> Back when he was an option quarterback, when he graduated uh, from the University of New Mexico, Rocky Long graduated as the school's all-time leading rusher. You know, he came that close to playing for Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight was recruiting him for basketball at, uh, at Army. I did not know that. Good one, Rod. Yeah. A little work every now and then. As BYU ties, both his parents went to BYU. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, some have said, hey, Ronnie Hillman was spectacular in the backfield for San Diego State. Moema's been good. He's taken it to a different level tonight. Oh, how good is that? I mean, picking your way through, darting, stopping, changing direction, making sure you don't get a big hit, just kind of slightly getting away from it. That's impressive. 103 total rushing yards in the game now for Moema. 77 of those have been after the initial contact. Moema again. This time the initial contact stops him. Brandon Ogletree, the senior from McKinney, Texas. They wrapped him up that time, huh? You cannot take the wrong angle and you cannot arm tackle. You can't reach out. Watch big old 44 Ogletree gets off a block right there, form tackle. That's wrapping up. Hunting unit comes on for San Diego State. I'm a little bit surprised around midfield on fourth and two. Morrow on the punt to false left. But first, leg game, leg game, offense number 17 by Yard Fire. Last San Diego State punt was blocked by Kyle Van Noy. Onsa charges hard. He nearly got to it. Good punt. False love all the way back inside the five. Finds a seam. Gets it back to near the 25. J.D. Falls left a 17-yard return after the 50-yard punt from McMorrow. Now get the BYU offense with some roll. We'll take a look now at tonight's perfect play brought to you by Reese's Moema. 
The only catch, but boy, he made the most of it. Well, he's been the only offensive star in the ball game tonight, and it's been running through tackles, yards after contact, making guys miss. I mean, he's carried the load for, for the San Diego State offense. He's been a big-time player tonight. More than 100 yards on the ground already for him. 137 total offense for Moema. BYU as a team has 171. Ouch. Seventh 100-yard rushing game this season for Moema. You don't climb up the uh, rushing ranks at San Diego State very easily with Ronnie Hillman and Marshall Falk before him setting a whole lot of records. Lark downfield with a bit of a knuckleball grabbed by Cody Hoffman. Well, that's the area where they've been able to get Hoffman free. Crossing routes, seam routes inside. Not a lot of them, but they get him this time. You see, one of the few times we've seen the zone coverage inside. He finds a soft spot, picks up the first down. Just the second pass play to go for 15-plus for BYU tonight. That one goes for 24. Pressure coming again. Williams dropped for a loss. Sam Meredith leads the charge for San Diego State. Yeah, see, they don't blitz just in passing situations. They bring run blitzes on first down because they're not big enough to stand in there and toss aside linemen. So they bring numbers. And they bring three, four secondary players, second-level players to clog up the run lanes. The 3-3-5 three, three, defense of Rocky Long. Williams out of the backfield. Gets free. Inside the 35. That's a mismatch when you get him out of the backfield against the linebacker. He was working against Feely, and that's a mismatch. But you have to have the time to have him circle out of the backfield, and they got him. That's the 17-year-old true freshman from Fontana, California, Summit High School. Cougars pick up the pressure. Lark heaves it incomplete, trying to get Hoffman on the crossing route again. Oh, it's the pressure. The pressure affected his accuracy. This time it was Andrews who got Lark's face. to go in the third. No one's reached the end zone yet. Timeout BYU. Play clock is down to six. Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow on ESPN. Beefo Brady's Bowl St. Petersburg, Central Florida versus Ball State, 7.30 Eastern Time. The Cardinals of Ball State trying to win their first bowl game. They have won six straight games. If they can win seven straight, they get a bowl win. Well, the bowl mania is really starting to get going now. Tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. We're about to hit our stride. We got it, uh, got it with the, off to a great start with that comeback in the Golden New Mexico by oh, Arizona. Arizona. Talk about the day for Arizona, then their basketball team comes back that night and drive down double digits to beat Florida. So two huge come from behind yeah. wins the same day for Arizona football and basketball. Empty formation. Knocked away, incomplete. Leon McFadden. Yeah. Covers up off. I, I can tell you, as a corner, when you don't feel that they can beat you deep, you jump everything. I mean, you play with a lot of confidence. You know it's going to be short stuff, and you just let your quickness take over. Look at that. He knew Hoffman wasn't going by him. Cougars backed up into third and ten. See how aggressive they are? One safety. Showing man coverage everywhere else. Lark complete. Incomplete. Knocked away at the last second. Intended for foot. Jake Feely, the middle linebacker. The sophomore who has 86 tackles on the year. Knocks that one away to force fourth down. You know, this San Diego State defense, 
it, it's gotten better over the course of the season. But Rocky Long will tell you, he doesn't think he has a great defense. And this might say more about the BYU offense than it does about the San Diego State defense. I mean, they, they're playing hard and doing well, but wow. No one back to return for San Diego State. So they go punt defense safe. And BYU takes advantage. They uh, down and back at the two. And just like Bronco told Jamel, the hunting unit led by Riley Stevens, so he's going to be the key for the offense here in the second half. Well, San Diego State co-champs of the Mountain West Conference this year. That's where BYU used to be. They're now independent. San Diego State scheduled, and I say scheduled, <laughs> to join the Big East next year. I say scheduled because if we've learned anything over the past couple of years, you just never know. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know what there is for San Diego State in the Big East anymore other than maybe a little bit of an increase in money in the short term. And maybe they're trying to position themselves for down the line. I think a lot of folks believe that what's coming is four conferences, maybe five, but, got, but teams like San Diego State are on the outside looking in right now. Moema gets out of the end zone. He's driven back, but his forward progress is at the line of scrimmage, so no safety. Moema gets out. Now, next year, the last year the BC has the Big East, no matter who is in the Big East next year, uh, there will be the automatic bid to the BCS out of the Big East next year. That's one year. One year. Then yeah. in 2014, the Big East will be part of the group of five where there's no automatic spot into the uh, access Look, goals the, coming in 20,000. The reality is that the Big East is on life support right now. I mean, they're losing basketball teams, too. BYU factors into that as well on second and ten. Price gets out of the end zone. Third down coming. CBS Sports reporting that there have been informal talks between the Big East and BYU. Uh, Fresno State and UNLV also reported the interest from the Big East as uh, that conference tries to put something together to keep itself trying to survive. Rolling. Infection in the seven Catholic basketball only schools is really hurt. Big East. And San Diego State is scheduled to be there next year. Well, they're scheduled to have a third down here and try and get out of this hole. This is this is significant here. They could they could have a problem with field position if they don't pick anything up here. Two seconds, one. Dingwell gets the snap off from the back of the end zone. Finds a receiver who is dropped short. It's Sandifer, Ogletree the first there. And the BYU defense, as it has in 2012, stepping up to make the big plays when the offense sputters. You just have this feeling that the way San Diego State has dominated this game, but they haven't put up enough points, the door is open for BYU. And we head to the fourth quarter in a three-point game in San Diego. We head to the fourth quarter of the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, a three-point game. Aztecs leading the Cougars 6-3. First play of the fourth quarter will be a punt for San Diego State from the back of their own end zone. Reminder after the game on ESPN3, coverage of the trophy presentation by the San Diego State of BYU. Morrow gets the punt off. Paul Sled near the sideline makes the grab right around the 50. So good kick from McMorrow. BYU gets it around the 50. And yet again, we ask the question: Can BYU do anything with the football on offense? Well, this is the short field that Bronco Mendenhall was talking about. He told Jamel earlier that he's counting on punting, was hoping to flip the field a little bit and get a short field. Well, he's got one now. Now, what do you do with it? 213 yards of First offense in the game. Riley Nelson, seen him in one series for BYU, is an interception on a tipped ball. James Lark has gone the rest of the way. The senior making just his second start. Over the middle, complete to Hoffman. 
Cody Hoffman has been the only answer for BYU. Yeah, well, he's been the guy they've used on the crossing routes. They've got him in the scene. He's a big target. He's a six foot four inch wide receiver. Easy to find. He's running free behind the linebacker there. A 30 yard gain for Hoffman. First and 10 from the 20. Five wide receivers. Now Hoffman is now in the slot. He's the third guy inside on the trips formation. Clark looks that way again. Hoffman on the slant, takes it to the 12. And put him inside there and let him work, work against those inside linebackers and that strong safety to that, to that side. Clark has completed 20 passes, half of them to Cody Hoffman. In the slot at the top, they'll run it. Falslev makes it first and goal, BYU. Well, that, that's been a nice adjustment this drive to take Hoffman off of the edge. So he's not the widest wide receiver, but they've moved him into the slot, or they've moved him in as the third receiver into that trips formation so that they have easy access for him to the middle of the field. Just makes it an easier throw for Lark, better matchup. And you get a better matchup. Better matchup, easier throw. Better success. Hoffman again in the slot at the top of the formation. Lark. Over the middle, incomplete, intended for Hoffman. Knocked away by Nat Verhey. And how many times have they worked that on this drive? I mean, they put him in that position, and they've gone to him three times. I think they've been, what, four or five plays on this drive? But they've put him inside there and tried to work inside. That's a ball he's got to come up with. They've run four plays on this drive. Three of them went to Hoffman. Yeah. And it's, they've moved him from the, the wide spot inside. Now he's to the bottom of the screen, back in his own position, but it was a close, close split. Second and goal. Give it to Williams. Falls to the four. Third goal coming for BYU. Second eight, number 36, where is Cody Hoffman on third and goal for BYU? Third and down and goal. To the bottom of the formation, number two. Yeah, well, they've got him out wide now. Now he's outside, away from that slot position. Not a lot of room over there for him. Pressure, blood. Off the hands of Hoffman, intercepted. King, the holders, second interception of the game. And the Aztecs hold on to the 6-3 to three lead. They come away with nothing. I mean, this ball's a little hot, but not too hot to catch. Slant route right in front of you. Here it comes in hot. You're Hoffman, right in your bread basket there. Got to make that catch. Big turnover. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill from San Diego, California. That's J.D. Falslev jogging off the field for BYU. San Diego State for the third straight possession. Starts inside their own five. Dingwell hit as he throws. Loose football. Recovered for a touchdown by Kyle Van Noy. BYU leads. We talk about a sudden change in your defense having to be ready to make a play. Kyle Van Noy, we've talked about him all night. Slips the block. Strip and recover. Only question is, was the arm going forward? No. I think that's a good clean play. Watch again. Is it coming forward? I think the ball was out. The ruling on the field 
was a fumble and a touchdown by the defense. The right tackle who was beat on that play, Zach Imbernati, is playing right tackle because of the injury to Zach Dilly in the first half. Imbernati moved from right guard out to right tackle because of the injury. And it's Imbernati who gets beat on that play by Van Noy for what now stands as a touchdown. Well, it's a tough matchup with Van Noy if you're an all-conference player. But to have to make the move and deal with him is even tougher. Now that ball looks like it. That ball's out and coming out even before the arm was moving forward. Now the rule is, if there's any doubt, if there's any movement forward with the hand, it is treated as an incomplete pass. But to my view, that hand wasn't coming forward. The ball was out. Uh, Stan Evans is uh, with us in the booth tonight, back official. And Stan, uh, from what you see there, do you see the, the arm moving forward for an incomplete pass? It's, it's going to be a very uh, tight call, Bart. Um, uh, what we're going to have here is, it looks to me as though it's an empty hand coming forward. Okay. Ball was out. As in the ball was out, yeah. fumble. Fumble. Yeah. And I'll, here we go. Touchdown. Ruling on the field confirmed, which means that the replay official and his judgment said yes, absolutely. Just as we were discussing, Stan, that the that the ball was that the hand was coming forward without the ball, therefore a fumble. Right. Touchdown BYU. Well, apropos when the BYU offense can't get in the end zone, that it's Kyle Van Noy and the Cougar defense. Who gets the first touchdown of this game for either side to give BYU a 10-6 lead. Van Noy brings the pressure and finally a touchdown in San Diego. And it comes from the BYU deep. ESPN College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big bank banking, it's better. The Experience Buick Lease, it's a new lease on luxury. And ProjectLuna.com. That's a USS Midway parked here in the harbor in San Diego, California. We've had a, a wonderful few days here in San Diego. Not a bad place to hang out in late December. We don't want everybody to know how much well, we enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it a secret. Kyle Van Noy gets the fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown for BYU, stripping it from Adam Dingwell. Well, we've seen him play a lot yeah. this season, and what he's doing tonight is typical. Typical stuff. He's got a sack. Seven tackles, three tackles for losses, has a quarterback hurry. The unusual thing is he has a touchdown. And the BYU defense comes through when the offense has struggled. Now the onus on San Diego State. From the five, this is Colin Lockett, who has two kickoff returns for touchdowns this year. But it ain't happened on this kickoff return. David Thorpe, the running back on special teams, gets down there. 12.27 to go. San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Reminder, ESPN 3 after the game to watch the trophy presentation to either San Diego State or BYU. If San Diego State wins this game. They have to do it in come from behind fashion. They have a 10-win season for the first time since 1977. They beat Bobby Bowden's Florida State Seminary that year in 77. Fumble! Still loose! Finally recovered by BYU! Help the umpire. He's in the middle of it. The signal is gone to BYU. It's BYU football. Jordan Johnson finally gets the fumble recovery. They're still fighting for it, even though the signal was made. And Jordan Johnson gets the recovered fumble. And Johnson was probably the smallest guy in that pile. Just uh, 
Just a drop, not a real bad exchange. Dingwell just didn't hang on to it. And actually, Johnson was one of the last guys to show up around the pile and waited for the ball, kind of squirted towards him. The last three plays from scrimmage have been turnovers. This is Williams for the first offensive touchdown of the game. And the Cougars have flipped the script in the fourth quarter. Now give credit to BYU for that, but you know what, to me, a sudden change like that, that's emotionally on the defense. You saw BYU with the turnover, their defense come out and get it turned around. That looked like San Diego State wasn't quite ready for that emotional turn of having to get back on the field. BAT kick is no good from Justin Sorensen. So a 10-point game, 12-15 to go now. The Aztecs fumble it away, and BYU turns it into a touchdown. Like the fight song says, we'll raise our colors high in the blue and cheer on our Cougars of BYU. Oh, how odd you go uh, to 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter of a game. And we haven't had a touchdown until last 18 seconds. Two touchdowns by BYU. One, the fumble recovery by Van Noy in the end zone for the defensive touchdown. And then after another fumble by San Diego State, Williams has the first offensive touchdown of the night. And now San Diego State charged with scoring twice in the last 12-15. We'll get it from the 40. Free kick. Out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed at 35 yard line. First down. My fault, 35. Jamel. Uh, guys, uh, Adam Moema, the running back for San Diego State, hasn't been in the last couple of series. Now, they say that he is not injured, that they were just trying to get more of a straight ahead, more straight ahead running from his backup. Uh, but it doesn't appear that he has an injury, that it was a performance uh, decision, despite how well he's been playing. Well, I don't get that. Neither do I. 26 carries, 103 yards for Adam Moema, and he is on the sideline right now for the Aztecs. So Price gets just his third carry of the night, and he is dropped by Spencer Hadley. Well, keep in mind that also, you know, Price was the third running back yep. most of the year. Walter Casey was the number two back who shared time. And in the fourth quarter, I mean, I know 26 carries is a lot for him, but you've put it all on him tonight. And until until he starts showing you he can't handle it, I think you have to keep him in the ball game. I mean, you have to give him the football. Well, here's Moema. His next touch will be a season high. Bigwell throwing on second down, dropped. Would have been a first down off the hands of Ruffin. Third down and long. Double one bowl week continues Saturday. Double header beginning at noon on ESPN East Carolina against Louisiana Lafayette, who beat San Diego State last year in the RL Carriers New Orleans Bowl, dramatic fashion. And then Mako Bowl Las Vegas, Washington against 19th ranked Boise State. 3.30 Eastern Saturday. And of course, all those games and all the bowl games available on the Watch ESPN app. They can bounce around to your holiday parties to get with the device. Yeah. Third and eight, Dingwell incomplete. Pressured again. It's Kyle Van Noy who delivers a lick on Dingwell. He needs to go. He needs to go to the lead. I, I don't know that he has much left to prove. He's trending now on Twitter. And he's trending with scouts. Central yeah. Browning, number seven, quarterback. Was still in the pocket, under duress, threw the ball where no eligible receiver was. Lost it down, fourth down. So you treat that basically like a sack with the intentional grounding. Yeah. I mean, Kyle Van Noy has shown all season long all the skills necessary to play at the next level. And he's to the top of the screen, beats his man again. There's the pressure. I mean, what move hasn't he shown you? Clearly that was grounding. He's shown you speed to the outside, speed and quickness inside. 
toughness on taking on the run game and mobility to defend the pass. So BYU fans enjoy it right now when you have those uh, two certain first day picks. If Kyle Van Noy comes out, we know Ezekiel Ons is going to be a first day pick, potentially first rounder for BYU. And we will uh, discuss more the amazing journey of Ezekiel Ansa when we come back to San Diego. A little over two years ago, Ezekiel Ansa walked into Bronco Mendenhall's office and said, I want to walk on the football team. Bronco Mendenhall's first question is, who are you? <laughs> the unlikely story from Ghana to Provo, Utah, he walked on the track team soccer and basketball great story a few weeks ago at sports illustrated with jeff benedict uh bronco mendenhall says someday it'll, it'll be a movie because of a tremendous journey for that young man more on ziggy in a moment mark and the byu offense back out there foot gets a few well, Bronco Mendenhall was telling us now, the big challenge with Ziggy is making sure he's surrounded by the right people as he thinks about the NFL. Because they know that this success, this is all new to him with the NFL and scouts and, and with agents and all, and that he needs to have some support around him to deal with the situation. Part of that Sports Illustrated story is his parents who have been unable to watch him. Uh, play football. His dad will ask him questions about basketball. And he says, Dad, I'm playing football. Now I'm playing football. And Bronco said, as soon as this game is over, the focus turns to giving him as much support as, as BYU possibly can as he moves towards a uh, career in professional football, potentially a first-round pick. This is as amazing a story as I've heard in college football. A guy who knew nothing about the game three years ago is now likely to be a first round pick. Williams gets it on first down, picking his way for a couple. Mm -hmm. and I want to credit you, Rod. You were early on this. Uh, you, you from talking to NFL scouts, you knew before a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. think you uh, talked to the show and said, hey, you got to reevaluate this guy. Well, it's, it's hard to miss when the NFL scouts are there watching tape and they're not looking at the other guys. And you're like, wait, this guy doesn't even start. And they're like, oh, this is the real thing. This, this guy is the guy we want. Wow. Ezekiel Ziggy Onsa from Accra, Ghana. Mark, flag down. Another flag down. He slides to the 40. We'll check the flags. If you want to see a hold, that was a big one right in front of the official, right in front of Lark. There are two penalties on the play. Offsides, defense number 12. Holding, offense number 75. Penalties offset, replay second down. Before second down, we check in with Jamel. You all were talking about Ziggy Ansah. I talked to him before the game, and I asked him, how does it feel to be playing in your last game? And he was like, I'm sad, I'm emotional. He was like, I really don't know how to feel right now. And I had to remind him, you do have a, quite an NFL career that could be ahead of you. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm just not thinking about that right now. I'm just thinking about how much I'm going to miss these guys. And you can see why Bronco Mendenhall says the challenge now is to get support around him for the next step. Zone read, Yona Pritchard gets it. Dropped immediately by 10 off, third down coming. Think about it. Could you go halfway around the world with strangers, learn a new culture, new language, and everything? That was kind of like we're going, that was kind of like we're going from Texas to Syracuse was like. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I hear Ziggy, by the way, I think about Dr. Roosevelt Rick Wright. <laughs> A handful, hand by a handful of you know what the Ziggy means. Blitz on third and nine. Lark picks it up and completes to the outside for a BYU first down. Yeah, Lark picked it up by beating the blitz. He got rid of the ball before he got the hit and got the ball to Henderson. 
And there was a free guy coming in his face. He saw it. He handled him and got rid of the football. Good celebration over there as Henderson gets the first catch of the year. Foot grabbed by his foot by Aaron Lincolns. The ESPN 3 after the game, the trophy ceremony. BYU trying to stick it to San Diego State again. They have won nine of the last ten. That's, it's tough when, when BYU has really dominated this series with San Diego State. Tough to call it a rivalry, but uh, it's a rivalry on the San Diego side. Yeah, they were very vocal when BYU uh, announced they were leaving the Mountain West Conference to become independent. Can't be a rivalry if you don't win. BYU's won five straight against their former whack of Mountain West Conference foes. Warwick chased down, sacked again. Josh Gather gets to him. Well, that pressure's been consistent all night now. San Diego State is not out of it. And they still have a chance to get the ball back, get a score, and make it a one-possession game. This is what we've seen all night. Six, seven-man pressure. BYU unable to figure out where it's coming from. Look, the reason the score is what it is right now, it's because of the BYU defense, not what the BYU offense has done tonight. Forcing those two turnovers, including the end zone. Fumble recovery for a touchdown by Van Noy. There's only one offensive touchdown in the game. BYU, 30-second timeout. Final timeout for BYU with 6.42 to go. Echo. Capital One Bowl Week available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone at watchespn.com. Watch ESPN app. Get a new mobile device under the tree this year. Just unwrap it. Make the first app you download the Watch ESPN app. Yeah, I, you were underutilizing your app until this year. I will figure it out. As, as, going to the airport with as it they, is a good thing. As they say in Silicon Valley, you're an early adapter, right? <laughs> yeah. They watch ESPN and all the myriad things. Well, we had to we had to coach you up and get you to be a vet, get you through the rookie moves. Yeah, you you can you can use it like a giant DVR of everything that's on the ESPN network. You miss a uh, moment the board game that everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. up on your watch ESPN app. Lark. After the sack on second down, forced to third and 20, and running his life away from the Aztec D. Dan Cotman gets to him, forcing fourth down. And as you said, this is a two-score game, but uh, over six minutes to go. San Diego State has now one timeout left. They use one here to stop the clock at 6:35. Yeah, yeah, they're not out of it, but they're not built to come back like this. I mean, their passing attack is not designed. Uh, to get you down the field quickly. They don't use a lot of three, four receiver sets. So it's going to be difficult for them. Next up, Capital One Bowl Week, Beefo Brady's Bowl St. Petersburg with two 100-yard rushes. Bowl season is fun because there's guys that you haven't seen all year who are very good football players, and two of them in this game, UCF and Ball State. Octavius Murray for UCF. And Juwan Edwards for Ball State, both over 100 yards a game. They meet tomorrow, Beefo Grady's Bowl, St. Petersburg, 7.30 Eastern. Riley Stevenson hits it right at the 50. Izzy lets it bounce. A good kick from Stevenson. After a couple of off punts from Stevenson, he's done his job pinning San Diego State back. Could they have had worse field position? I mean, it's been horrible for them all night. Well, this is, let's see, four of their last five drives have started inside their own 10. Yeah. And, uh, one of those resulted in the fumble in the end zone recovered by 
Van Noy. Average starting drive, they're only 21. That's the average. And they've been inside their 10 a number of times. Dingwell from just the other side of his goal line, incomplete, intended for Butler, who slipped on the route. Yeah, everybody's taking their shot at Kyle Van Noy, and, and no one can stop him. I mean, that time they had the fullback come out to try and find and they used Young uh, on him, Chad Young, but he just gave him a swim move, went, went right by him, and pressured the quarterback, Dingwell. To find number three and find a couple guys to handle it. The BYU defense has dominated tonight, especially in the fourth. See Van Noy dancing behind Anza, who's lined up over the center. For second down, Van Noy right in the face of Dingwell again. They can't block him. And how about the game Van Noy's playing with? Also with the hand down, and Van Noy's just dancing right around him. Yeah, I mean, he is absolutely dominating this game now. He just blows by Chad Young once again. I, I don't know that Young wanted, him, wanted much of it, you know? That's a little bit of an ole, yeah, excuse me kind of block. Didn't appear to be. Watch out for him again. Van Noy and Ansa. Now Van Noy drops in coverage. Dingwell pressured has to heave it out of the end zone into the hands of Kyle Van Noy. Touchdown. performance in San Diego from Kyle Van Noy. Wow. Wow. Well, just watch him to the right of your screen. We talked about his ability to be so versatile. Here he is in pass coverage. And the hands. The hands. Nice clean catch. And running skills. And just go. Go. Go to the lead. <laughs> the second touchdown of the game for the weak side linebacker from Reno, Kyle Van Noy. One, a fumble in the end zone. He stripped it from Dingwell. That one, an interception as he drops into coverage on third long. 17-yard INT for TD. What a great, great player. You know, he's been great for college football. Man, it'd be nice to have him back for one more year, but I don't think that's going to happen. And now for tonight's player of the game, brought to you by Capital One. Uh, is there uh, any doubt as to who our player of the game is tonight? Yeah. Block a kick, get several tackles for losses, cause a fumble, recover a fumble, get a touchdown out of it, and then get yourself a pick six just for good measure. I mean, could you be more dominant on a big stage in a bowl game, likely your last collegiate game wow we got a long way to go in this bowl season but i don't think you're going to see a more impressive and dominant defensive performance for the rest of the bowl year than what kyle van noy has put together tonight for byu the two touchdowns the punt block the confusion that he has uh Hoisted upon the San Diego State offense. Yeah, a pencil lemon right now in the all bowl team. Yes. Well, congratulations all around for Kyle Van Noy. Well deserved. Sorensen's kickoff taken from inside the 10 by Lockett. Rolling to just over six minutes to go. You know, he's been the BYU offense tonight. Absolutely. He's outscored their offense by himself. Well, and he's been the offense for both sides. And San Diego State has not been in the end zone. <laughs> wow. Van Noy's going to get back out there again. <laughs> Why not? The jersey shows it too, doesn't it? You know, he's, he's old school tough, but today's kind of player. Athletic, long. I mean, he's just, he's something else. Number 
Prior to tonight, BYU had one defensive touchdown this year. Spencer Hadley, a fumble recovery for a touchdown. They get two tonight, both from Kyle Van Noy. You know who had their eye on uh, Kyle Van Noy in high school? Our buddy and colleague, Dan Hawkins. Uh, Colorado said that uh, Kyle Van Noy was an outstanding tellback in high school. Showed some of those skills in that pick six. Of McQueen High School in Reno, Nevada. Two for 14 on third down tonight, San Diego State. Dingwell intercepted. Jordan Johnson gets the pick. And the dominant BYU defense is rolling to a bowl game win tonight in San Diego. The sixth, fifth turnover by San Diego State. I've said all season that this is one of the top defenses in college football. There's Jordan, Jordan Johnson coming up with a pick to go along with his fumble recovery tonight. But I, I think you start talking about the top defenses. You talk Alabama, you talk Notre Dame, Stanford, you know, put BYU in there, you know, South Carolina, LSU. This play is under further revealed. The ruling on the field was an interception by the defense. I, I think that front seven of that BYU defense stacks up with those other top teams. The fourth takeaway this quarter, if it stands. That angle hard to tell. Here's a better look. Now, he doesn't have his hands and arms underneath the ball, so you've got a good portion of the ball that touches the field. Yeah, you see, you see the arms and the elbows are up, and the ball is in between and hitting the ground. Jordan Johnson has only one interception this season, the sophomore corner. Yeah, from that, yeah and, that, and at yeah. the end there, it looks like he doesn't have possession, doesn't have control of it. He's trying to, to wrestle with it to, to show that he has it when it, it's not clear he does there. And remember in college football, as you watch throughout the bowl season, the rest of the way, yeah, that, that doesn't look good. This is uh, solely the decision of the replay official. He'll communicate that to the referee on the field, but unlike the NFL where the Referee on the field goes under the hood. This is the replay official's judgment. That last look looked to me like he didn't control that ball. The replay officials uh, tell us whenever we talk to them, they say we're looking for a clear picture to overturn. I, I thought that last one was the best, the best picture. Let's see if we have a clear picture. After further review. It was determined that the ball hit the ground as an incomplete pass. It will be fourth down. Would the clock operator please put five minutes and 42 seconds on the game clock? Thank you. Good acting. <laughs> Great acting, but that's the right call. Back early on in this ball game, we talked about San Diego State not taking advantage of being in the red zone, kicking field goals instead of getting touchdowns. They had chances to get way up and never took advantage of it. And now it's down to fourth down. Dingwell throws complete to a dragging receiver, Sandifer, who gets out of bounds, 536. So San Diego State still has hope, down 23 to 6. I guess I'll look for the hope, 23 to 6, 536. To yeah, the problem is, yeah, it's a three-score game for them right now. Trophy ceremony on ESPN3 after the game.
That's Escobar. There is a flag down, a couple flags down, making three flags down. If it stands, that would be just the second catch for Gavin Escobar, the junior tight end. Um, yeah, their top receiver. Mm -hmm. Participation with 12 players on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, and it's first down. They've been playing pretty well all night with 11. <laughs> I don't know that they needed 12. <laughs> First and five after the penalty administered. Dingwell sacked again, dropped at the 45. Bronson Kofusi. The freshman who now has four and a half sacks. So if you're looking to 2013 and who's going to be the playmakers for the BYU defense, Bronson Kofusi, likely one of them. Dingwell's pass is intercepted. Picked off by BYU. So they have one interception wiped out. And then Fua, the linebacker, picks that one off. Now the fifth turnover by San Diego State. Third interception by the BYU D. Yeah, that's Alani Fua, sophomore. His brother, Sione, was a... Really good defensive lineman for the Stanford Cardinal now in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. Who gets the pick and now 447. BYU will look to presumably run the football, run the clock. San Diego State has only one timeout. Williams dropped for a loss on first down. Obviously, San Diego State knows what's coming. Well, you know, you, you want to win your bowl game, but this has been a great year. For San Diego State walking off. Disappointment tonight, but getting a share of the Mountain West Conference Championship after everyone expected them to be a team that would struggle to get four or five wins. Tremendous season. Conference title for the first time since 1998. They win at Boise State, the first road win ever against a top 25 opponent. San Diego State playing in a bowl game for the third straight year. That's a school record. They had a losing season the first year under Brady Hoke as head coach, Rocky Long as defensive coordinator. Then uh, two seasons ago, they make it to the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Now a third straight bowl trip. Rocky Long, Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. A lot of people have looked at San Diego State for years and years and said, boy, why can't you win that? Now they are. Mm -hmm. Well, keep in mind, they've won this year after losing their starting quarterback. Yes, a good one, Lindley. Well, Lindley last year, but then Katz, oh, yes. this year, got hurt in that Nevada game. Ryan Katz, the Oregon State transfer. So Dingwell, the quarterback for San Diego State, even though he struggled tonight, especially in the fourth quarter against BYU, coming back next year for San Diego State. He'll be a junior. Moema will be a junior. If Escobar stays, with the question mark for the Aztecs, he's a senior. So and, uh, again, San Diego State, Big East next year. Unless <laughs> it the next unless minutes. there is no Big East. Right. <laughs> right. Check my Twitter feed a while. Don't know if it, this is all changing pretty fast. Everybody shifted. Yeah, exactly. Stevenson hangs it up again. Come right around the one. What is Stevenson? Public address announcer just said he did it again. <laughs> One yard line, guys. Eleven yard line. 
Down at the one. Good punt from Stevenson. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear or driven. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill from San Diego, California, where the Aztecs are backed up from their own one. Chase Price is in a tailback. Gets out of the end zone, but not very far. Ezekiel Ansa on the tackle. Well, Riley Stevenson had a couple of bump punts early. Now that he has pinned San Diego State back again and again, Come on, right? I mean, you got to you got to finish the celebration. If you're gonna start it. Like he got knocked over by uh, Michael Yak, the tackle, as he uh, attempted to celebrate the good punt. He's a senior playing in his last game as a BYU Cougar, and he has been uh, solid. Four inside the three by Riley Stevenson tonight. There's another loose football. Wow. Looked like the Aztecs got on top. Ezekiel Ansa punched it free, and Kyle Van Noy nearly got on the ball. Wow. We asked Bronco Minnell, BYU played Notre Dame right down to the end. Mm -hmm. Asked him if you were playing Notre Dame, Notre Dame again for the national championship. What would you do? What would you do differently? He said, I would do absolutely nothing differently. Thought that they played a very physical game against a very physical Notre Dame team. Yeah, but acknowledge that. It's not easy to get Sierra Wood on the ground. Right. Hard to tackle. But Riley Nelson was tough in that football game for BYU against uh, that tremendous Notre Dame defense. Long way to go before we get to Miami in the national championship game. A lot of, a lot of time to chew that one, chew on that one. A lot of time to enjoy some pretty good bowl games before we get there. Bronco Mendenhall says, uh, make no mistake about it, national championships are the goal at BYU. We had a good conversation with him about uh, even as an independent, says I think we would have to go undefeated back-to-back -back seasons. He's knocked away. Fourth down, BYU takes over. They can take a knee. So even though BYU goes uh, eight and five with this bowl win, he says we we're not happy with eight and five. We have higher standards than that. No, he, he said they expect 10, 11 wins every year. They expect to get oh. the point. Oh, now look at the look at the maneuvering by Bronco to get out of the way of the. He didn't make it. <laughs> I, you know what? I think with the, a minute five. You may have thought that was premature. It's yeah. first to go here, and I would be surprised to see anything. Indeed, here's the victory formation. So, of course, with the uh, well, respect between the coaches, no question. Yeah, lot, a lot of history. First to goal. Those two guys having worked together for years, like and respect each other, good friends, no, no desire for any, either one of them to run up the score or have anything like that happen. Well, reminder, Sports Center is coming up next. A Thunder win streak has been snapped. LeBron and the Heat are rolling in Dallas. Notre Dame underdog? Question mark. That's what the Irish are embracing as they get ready for the BCS National Championship. Sports Center is coming up next. Trophy ceremony on ESPN3. Bronco Mendenhall and Rocky Long will. Shake hands in midfield to San Diego County Credit Union. Poinsettia Bowl won by BYU, 23 to 6. Sports Center is coming up next. The Cougars get to celebrate, and again on ESPN3, our trophy ceremony. A dominant performance by Kyle Van Noy and the BYU defense, and they win it 23 to 6 tonight in San Diego. For Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, I'm Carter Blackburn. Stay classy. Sports Center begins right now.